just wanted to say happy Mother's Day to all those lovely mums out there, including mine. Hi everybody, this is Chris the Alphanut, and today I'd like to talk about a beautiful Italian car which was one of the most successful and innovative cars ever made. But today, this car has been almost completely forgotten. Now, if I were to tell you that this car was launched in 1997 and during its production run of just eight years, almost three quarters of a million examples were built and sold. Now, at the end of 2018 in the UK, there were just 3,127 examples left on the road. Now, this car was crowned Car of the Year in 1998 by a panel of over 56 journalists from 21 countries and it won a total of we switched the lights out and it won a staggering total of 35 awards including technical innovation for its groundbreaking common rail diesel engine two the European award for automotive design three international engine of the year number four I'm gonna to have to read this one because it's complicated the Auto One Europa Award by a panel of engineers, drivers and journalists from 11 European car magazines. Mm. It won Auto Trophy 1998 by Auto Zeitung magazine, proving that even the Germans loved it. And to top it all off, it was voted the most beautiful car in the world by the Italians. I can't help thinking that they might have been a little bit biased. So by now you're probably wondering what on earth this world-beating car could be. How could something so clever, so innovative, so beautiful and so universally loved simply fade into obscurity? Wow, of course, the 156. So it was clever, it was beautiful, it was innovative, but was it all show and no go? No, it wasn't. After its launch, this four-door saloon car promptly won an incredible seven touring car championships in Europe, Italy and South America. Winning the FIA Touring Car Championships three years running a-list Hollywood celebrity Catherine Zeta-Jones even appeared in TV adverts for the sport wagon version of the car, such was its stylish image. Look, there she is in the goggles. Its sleek and timeless design still looks as fresh now as the day it first wowed the audience of the Frankfurt Motor Show in 1997. So, bear with me a moment while I fast forward 20 years. Yeah, nearly there. Just a minute, a couple more years. Yeah, here we go. Right, today, where incredibly, the 156 is now an endangered species, with just 3,000 roadworthy examples left in the UK. Now I have a 156 which was so cheap it was virtually free, despite being one of the rarest models produced. A 2.5 litre Busso V6 engine Veloce, with the Sport Pack 3 specification. Now this gives you lowered suspension, hilarious carbon effect centre console, leather Momo trim and a huge rear boot spoiler which looks like a 1970s moustache. In 2017, according to howmanyleft.com, 
there were just five examples of the V6 Veloce Sport Pack 3 left in the UK. My car being one of only three which were actually taxed and on the road. I think that makes it worth saving. Now, as you would expect, the car had a few rust issues in the usual places, floor pan, wheel arches, sills. This has all now been repaired, so the attention is on the paint, which apart from being generally tired and damaged in places, also suffers from terrible lack appeal, like most red Alfa Romeos seem to. Next stop, the body shop. Okay, so the sun's shining. and I'm setting off to the uh, sprayers. It's not gonna be the easiest journey though because I've got a front bumper inside the car. Yeah, it's uh, taking up quite a lot of room. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to change gear. Anyway, wish me luck. So I'm on the road and I'm heading for Auto Art in Newton Abbott in Devon, which is where my 156 is being prepped this morning for its respray. And um, a little bit nervous because finding people who are proud of their work and who want to do a good job for customers is, uh, is not as easy as it should be. I did do a bit of research before I decided to um, to ask Auto Art to do it and uh, they get good reviews and they're a young team and they seem pretty enthusiastic so that's good enough for me. I'm uh, going along this morning to meet Rich who's the owner of the business and um, set up the time lapse in the workshop so uh, I can get some footage of the preparations so that'll be good. See you soon. So here we are at Auto Art meet Rich. Here he is. Hi Rich. Hi, are you okay? How are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. Um, so, um, what are we doing today? Uh, so, today we've got the Alpha inside the unit. Um, the intention is to strip everything down, take the bumpers off, the spoiler, the lights, uh, remove all the rubbers, the mirrors, uh, the handles, basically get it completely stripped down, um, and then we'll be ready for prep work. So to start with, um, we've had all of the dents uh, taken out by paintless dent removal. There are very, very small dents in the, in the vehicle, so rather than putting any filler in there, we've completely removed all of the damage, all of the dents. There's only one small piece of corrosion on the, on the vehicle, um, and we've cut that out and welded that in, so that's all solid. The underneath looks really nice on this one, so there's not a lot to, to contend with with the, uh, the underneath of the vehicle. Um, so once everything's stripped down, uh, we'll take a DA to it and uh, prep all the surface, uh, scotching all the edges, basically get it ready for paint. Right. Now this guy, Chris. Hi, I'm Chris. Has the dubious honour of stripping the Alpha ready for its preparation and paint. The front bumper is heavily damaged, so that's being replaced with this. Obviously, the sharp-eyed viewers amongst you will have noticed that it's the wrong colour. Well, that's not really a problem, because this being a body shop, they'll just strip that and repaint it in the same colour as the rest of the car.
Okay, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you've had fun. I'll see you in another episode when hopefully we'll pick up this particular 156's story when it's finished. I'll see you soon.